Hello, this is Gerard Hector. Welcome to True Hoop Tactics. I am here with Coach David Thorpe. And what we're going to do here, guys, we're starting a little project here at True Hoop. You know, we are basketball-obsessed people. We love it. Um, one of the advantages that Henry Abbott, our founder, loves to say is we have Coach Thorpe's big basketball brain. And that's what we have that a lot of other places don't have. They may have swag and cool studios and all this fancy gadgets, but we got the big basketball brain in mind of Coach Thorpe, who's been coaching basketball for 30-odd some years now, 30-plus. I know I'm making you old, sorry. And, <laughs> and coaching pros for over 20 years. So you're, you're getting some real insight here. So we're excited, and uh, we're happy you guys take this journey with us. Coach, how are you? I'm doing great, and I had a laugh when you talk about old. Uh, <laughs> my, my wife and I are doing our first uh, Halloween party in a long, long time. I, I'm not a dress-up guy, and she's upset at me about that. She's like, you're such a fun guy. Why don't you want to dress up? <laughs> so she, she basically guilted me into it. So we're going as uh, Ted Lasso and Coach Beard, and I'm doing the Coach Beard because she's the boss. <laughs> so I get it. I've been grooming my, my beard every week. I haven't groomed it in, in 10 days now. And it's just mostly gray. So when you say you're, you're telling my age, like it's not hard for anyone that's looked at me. I'm, I'm all of almost 58, but I'm doing great. I'm excited about this. Um, I want to say something about tactics. Mm -hmm. The reason why we picked it, Gerard, that name is the game is getting more tactical again. We, we've got all these incredible athletes and skill, but Europe has kind of had a stranglehold on the tactics part of it, comparatively speaking, because they don't have the Kyrie's and LeBron, they just don't have those guys. The Jalen Browns and Tatums and all these amazing players we have at the highest level who don't need help a lot of times to score. In Europe, they need help. They don't have the, the, the guys that can just shake you that way. And so they run lots of sets and lots of screens and lots of misdirection and lots of strategy, and they call it the tactical game, mm -hmm. tactics. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, I know for a fact some NBA teams, if not most of them, are starting to hire guys that have coached in Europe. Even I don't care if they're American or not. They've, they've, they've just gotten comfortable playing that way more, and they're putting them on their benches. And some guys are head coaches in the NBA that have coached overseas uh, and or the G League, where they also have to rely on some tactics. And um, the game is just getting more tactical. Mm -hmm. So we are not going to only talk about tactics. Uh, you'll see today, because in addition to having the tactics, you have to have a mindset. The strategy doesn't matter without thinking. And so I don't want to overwhelm people with um, very, very, very grainy details of, uh, uh, I was telling someone today, uh, pin down, go screen, veer screen action. Mm -hmm. we, we can do that one day, mm -hmm. but I think there's more to delight our, our, our uh, listeners to enjoy the game more by hearing some of the things that we're going to say and show. We're going to show some video today. And, uh, the next time they watch a game they'll, and hear the announcers talk or whatever, uh, they'll just have a better, clearer, clearer picture of what really is happening on the court. Mm -hmm. And that's our thing, our goal whenever we do this, to help our listeners enjoy the game more. Absolutely. No, and this is, again, this is your expertise. This is what you do. When you watch the game, you know, you see different things. I, I always say, before we ever met, the one thing I learned from you from all my years of listening to you on True Hoop in its first iteration was, trying to watch the game, but don't watch the ball, which as yeah. I've said a million times is really hard because your eyes don't want to follow the ball, but see what else is happening to set up what is going to be the score. A quote that we love using all the time from coach pop is when Kawhi realized, Oh, you're not drawing a play for me to score. You're drawing a play for us to score. Right. right. And there are certain teams like the warriors who that's just what they embody that it's not about Steph Curry scoring. though he does that plenty. It's about how do the warriors score? And when you're worried about a team scoring, they're so much harder to defend. And, you know, this is why yeah. the great teams are the great teams. Yeah, I think, you know, the goal in the game is to score, but the, the goal really should be to score in the easiest way possible because then it's more duplicatable um, over and over again. And uh, some teams just don't really buy into that. They, and so every basket's hard. And I think that's a mistake. And so today I think I'm glad you brought up scoring with, without, uh, not, you know, not following the ball. I think every clip we're going to show you today, uh, it's not about the ball. You'll see in every one, it's really not about what's happening with the guy with the ball in his hands. It's everything else going on. So I think that as people hear and see this today, they'll, they'll watch their games tonight and, and just see more, which is what we yeah. want them to do. Absolutely. All right, so we're going to uh, start off the show talking about what did Coach Thorpe see last night. Um, we had two games on TNT last night. We had um, – 
Lakers Clippers and we had Celtics, I'm sorry, 76ers and the Bucks. So the first clip we're going to look at is from the Laker game. Yeah, so it, it, right away, first first possession, the Clippers, uh, Reggie Jackson misses a shot. You can start it now if you want. And um, it's just going to be in, in slow motion a little bit for people to that you can kind of just, you'll get an idea of what's going on as I'm talking and watching it. Um, as the Lakers get a rebound, Candace Parker is talking about how Darvin Ham is talking about transition and fast break, and we got to play fast, and nobody can guard LeBron and AD on the fast break. Well, meanwhile... First shot is a miss. Mm -hmm. LeBron is past the three-point line when the shot's taken. Mm -hmm. If you want to pause it right there, just as he outlets maybe to a Walker, mm -hmm. AD gets the rebound and quickly throws it to Walker. Now there's three Clippers back. You can see on, on, the, on the screen right here, mm -hmm. there's three Clippers. There's only two Clippers you can really see. Zubac's right. already getting back. Mm -hmm. Two are other back. And it's really going to be a, a three-on-three -three situation at best. And but one of those three should be LeBron James. But look where LeBron's facing. Mm -hmm. LeBron wants the ball. He sh he's pa he's past the three point line. He should be flying down the court and give luck a chance to happen. Mm -hmm. Right. The Lakers. This is I know why Darvin Ham wants this. Gerard. Darvin Ham wants to race more mm -hmm. because, as you heard LeBron say after the first game, we don't have a lot of shooters. <laughs> right? Not yet. Anyway, not proven shooters. Right. Uh, and so scoring in transition allows less potency to be, to, to be uh, gained from their half court and still be effective because they're scoring the full court. This right. is what the Raptors do, who lead the league pretty much every year in fast break points because their half court offense is just okay. They don't have a big fulcrum at center. They're playing two guards at center in Siakam and Barnes a lot of times. The Raptors don't have a point guard that's a pure passing guard right. in Fred Van Vliet. So how do they make up for it? They had 15 steals the other game, I believe. They're flying down the court all the time. If this was the, if this exact same situation happened for Toronto, mm -hmm. you would see dudes flying. Mm -hmm. But LeBron is standing facing the opposite way where he should be running mm -hmm. because he wants to control things, and he's 37. Yeah. So he is going to pick his spots. You get a run-out dunk, he'll do it. Yep. You get an obvious situation two-on-one, I think he'll go. But this is a situation where you have to have a mindset to race, even if they're back on defense. And then you can always slow down later. Right. And remember us saying this when we show you some Warriors clips. The Warriors are racing almost always. Yep. The Lakers, it's great for Darvin to say it, but they're not doing it. And I think what ends up happening, Gerard, is I think the Lakers have to get comfortable with the idea of when LeBron's on the court, we can play slower. Mm -hmm. When LeBron's off the court, let's fly. You got to race. Yeah, because and, and LeBron's not there to help in the half court either. Right. So in this situation, we outlet pass to Walker. You can see the outlet pass here. And LeBron's just standing still, barely jogging. Yeah. And they have to get into their half court set. They end up scoring out of it, but that's not the point. It's great that you can score in the half court some. But if you, you have LeBron James very, very fast still, uh, the coach wants you to race. Talk is nothing, Gerard. Doesn't matter what the coach says. If you're not willing to race, in those situations, then we're not going to be a racing team. You know, David, in that, uh, in that particular play, when LeBron's back is to the basket, right, and you see there's basically four, La right, four Lakers behind the play. Yeah, yeah. Because Le Zubac is running up to get back on defense. Right. LeBron's still faster than Zubac, right? So yeah. if he turns and sprints, right, you, you're now ahead, right? It's 2-2, two, two, right? Beverly's to the right of him. He could also race up. That's the idea of getting the defense in an unsettled situation, right? I think that's a Correct. term that I think if you've played sports before, whether it be basketball, soccer, or anything, coaches always talk about getting the other team in an unsettled situation where they're scrambling to figure out who am I supposed to pick up and guard. And I think when you turn and wait for the ball, as he did, it allowed it, Powell passed them. Everybody got back. They did score, as you said, but it forced him to score over a set defense. So, right. So this is a phrase I've said when I was a high school coach, I probably said more than anything else because we had this elite low post scorer who to this day, I think is the leading scorer in the history of the state of Florida for post players had a long career as a professional basketball player, went to the final four for the Gators and 94, his name is Dimitri Hill, six, 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 seven, 300 pound, you know, freshman. Huge. <laughs> so I, I studied the game for him. Post defense is at its worst in transition. Why? Because you're 
by yourself typically. There's no one else sloughing off. They're busy getting back or finding their shooters right away. And uh, you may not be the matchup that it's supposed to be. In other words, maybe if LeBron always raced, sometimes the center wouldn't be back. Well, first of all, Zubac in the post against LeBron, that's advantage LeBron with quickness. He'll just face up. That's not what they want. They don't want Zubac guarding him. So he could have he could have run right to like the twelve foot spot and got big. Zubac might have let LeBron just go because he's worried about AD potentially. That's my guy. That happens all the time where players don't pick up anybody. They just look for their guy. The whole point of the transition game is you're forcing people to make decisions very quickly, instantaneously. Same reason why we set screens. That's why you race and you hope they choose poorly. They may not, but if they choose poorly ten times a game, you might score twenty points. So you have to have that mindset of if you really want to be a racing team, don't pick and choose. You want to be opportunistic, that's different. But that's not what Darvin Ham told Candace Parker. Correct. <laughs> and so it's, it's, when we talk about identity, that's where the Lakers don't have an identity. When the coach is saying we're going to be a racing team and LeBron is like, no, 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 we're going to choose to run when I choose to run, you've got a discrepancy there. They have to figure that out. No, it's perfect, and we're going to contrast that now talking about the Warriors. Everyone who listens to us knows David calls the Warriors the Cuisinart. Those of you who don't know, the Cuisinart is a brand that makes a food processor. You ever put anything inside of a food processor and press that button down, it's chaos in there when the, when the blade's slicing up whatever you put in there. Things are flying in all different directions. That's what it feels like sometimes to play the Warriors. Clay Thompson, after opening night, was on the TNT inside the NBA set, and they asked him, you know, how did you guys sort of get your identity of how you want to play? And Thompson kind of like smiled. He was like, oh, man, when Coach Kerr got here, he showed us film of the European football club FC Barcelona and their style of play, which is called Tiki Taka, right? Which is basically short for short, quick passes and movement between players, right? And the idea there, again, with that is when there's constant ball and player movement, as David says, you have to, you have to think. And, but like not, I got five minutes to figure out what to do. I have to think literally in half a second. And more often than not, you're going to make mistakes. And that's where the Warriors capitalized. So we're going to watch some, uh, some Tiki Taka or Cuisinart from the, uh, from the Warriors. Yeah. So uh, first of all, I'm pretty sure Henry came up with the term first. <laughs> Cuisinart. I don't, we've been together so long, I don't remember. But, but, but hold on, Ed, before you started to ride. Um, to your point, the, um, the, again, the goal is to score as easy as possible. Right? And our league is so full now of watch the ball. If you're a defense, forget about fans. Watch the ball. If you're on defense, that's the threat. That's the threat. And the Cuisinart has just flipped that around. Everyone's a threat. They're all blades in a sense. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get into a little bit. We've, we've written articles about this too, as to why, because you asked me a great question. Why are you guarding screener so closely? You're going to, you're going to see why, but to your point about uh, the Lakers and not running and what you just said about always having to make quick decisions, mm -hmm. the Warriors are playing fast. They don't want you to breathe for a second. They want you uncomfortable always. It goes toward the, the – everyone would love to – okay, if we're going to play defense, let me get home. Let me make sure the window uh, – if someone's trying to attack my house, let me lock the doors. Yeah. Let me close the windows. Who doesn't want that? Right. But when you've got to race home and then start doing it, you're in trouble. Right? If there's really a bad guy chasing you, if, uh, the Halloween guy's chasing you, Mike Myers or whatever, <laughs> um, you can't bang down the hatches. That's why the transition offense is so important. They can't build their fort and lock it up, right? So this is a dead ball situation here. All five Lakers are back. Mm -hmm. And it, so, so if I told you, so Steph Curry is going to get a relatively open layup without having to dribble the ball, you ask yourself, how could that be? Yeah. All five defenders are back. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the magic of the Cuisinart and the way the Warriors play where everyone's weaponized as a passer and a cutter. All right, we can go ahead forward here. So this is Poole. So I'm going I'm to narrate some so anyone just listening can hear it. Poole brings the ball up. Steph Curry's buried in the left corner. Uh, this, is, this is a frequent thing. You can pause it there, Gerard. A frequent start to the way that you can back it up a little bit to the way the Warriors play is they start off. The guard brings it up and throws it right to Draymond top of the key. Kind of like the quarterback, okay? Mm -hmm. So now Poole, after a passer, he's going to look to screen or pin down uh, Curry, which means he's pinning Curry's defender, in this case, Austin Reeves, pinning him towards the baseline. The fear is that Curry's going to come off the screen and shoot the three. Everyone's always petrified of that. Without question, if, you, if, you, if you're watching this, Reeves is under Curry. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he knows the screen is coming from Poole. Because normally you would get on top of Curry and not let him get 
get a three off, but they're going to switch this screen. That We know that. They're going to switch it. So he, Or Reeves just messed up terribly if they weren't switching it, which means none is going to show on Curry to make sure he doesn't get the three. And now Reeves has to take pool when, they, when, they, when the screen is coming. But Curry, so, so we talk about setting screens to make defenders think to Rod, right? Mm-hmm. But the best coach teams and the smartest players recognize all of this is a design just for us to score. Mm-hmm. I'm supposed to screen for Curry. Curry knows I'm supposed to get a screen. But Curry also knows I'm just trying to score. So he realized very quickly here, Reeves is so far behind him, so worried about Poole on the switch, that I can just face cut, which is literally cutting off his face, in front of his face, and get a layup. I don't even need the screen. They're, they're in a bad position starting out with. Curry just face cuts him. Green delivers the perfect bounce pass. And Curry gets a pretty tough reverse layup. But in the NBA, they're, they're going to make that shot certainly more than half the time. Ask the question you asked me about Davis oh, well, guarding Green at the top. So as you as you're doing this, coach, right? Green is Green's not a shooter. Everyone knows nope. that, right? So right. you don't have to guard him to shoot. So can Anthony Davis in his position here? He doesn't seem like he's playing the passing lane well enough. Could he have gotten? And he's a big, long guy. He's got yep. seven foot five or whatever wingspan. Can he sag better and, and play that passing lane better? And he's a great defender, and he's been playing very well these these, these this regular season so far. So the answer is yes. He could have easily sloughed off and taken this pass away for sure. So then what would have happened? Now Draymond goes in a dribble handoff with Curry. Nunn's guarding Curry. AD is sloughing off. Mm. Nunn's got to go over the top. First of all, if Nunn goes underneath Green, Curry gets the three for sure. If Nunn goes over the top, which is how Boston defended Curry the first three or four games of the finals when Curry was going crazy. Mm. Remember, Curry had more threes, I think, the first four games of that series than he did any other series combined, yep. of the, each, each one of those series, because those teams try to take Curry's three away more so than Boston did because they wanted Robert Williams and Horford hanging the paint more and Grant Williams mm-hmm. as a paint protector. So that's why AD is pressed up a little bit. It's he's worried. Curry's in a, they know what play's coming. Curry's coming off the screen. Or, or Jordan Poole fakes the screen to Curry, comes back, and he's going to go DHO, dribble handoff yep. with Green. Either way, they're they're – potent shooters on the DHO. So, so Davis has to stay pressed up so he can what we call curl protect when they curl off that screen. That uh, Because he's got to stay close to the green, that allows – look how wide open the paint is for those that are watching. It's wide open there. It, it, it's, it's So what makes – as you always say, what makes the crease that much better is that you have the greatest shooter of all time on it, yeah. but you've got such great spacing. With Clay and Wiggins, and Clay's a 40-plus percent three-point shooter. Wiggins is 38 last year. Right. To your point, Toscano, Anderson, and Westbrook are – are right up. On they're hugging him. They're hugging him. Yeah, because they're they're deathly afraid of the three, which means and Curry reads that right. So much of the Cuisinart is about right. reading and reacting. That's right. The play may have been for that dribble handoff, as you said, but Curry's like, "Fuck it, the paint's open. I'm gonna cut. Here we go. Give me that. Oh, we'll get an easy layup." It's beautiful to watch them kind of play that system and read and react off of each other. Yeah. So you said it with before, and Pop, but Pop was Pop was asked about that to, about Kawhi. Why is he doing so well? And he said. He's learned that we're running plays for us to score, not, not him to score. But part of that whole process, this is something high school coaches deal with a ton, less so in the NBA because they're, they're just much better players. Uh, everything I'm giving you, you don't have to do it if you think you can score. My offense is going to work if you follow it. But as the defense adjusts to what we're doing, if you can make a simple read, our goal is to get an easy basket. Mm-hmm. We can't always do it. Mm-hmm. The Warriors get a lot of that. The Sixers, less so. Their easy basket has let James Cook, let him yeah. beat, let Maxi Cook. Yeah. The Warriors have four titles in eight years and would have had five. In fact, I'd argue they should have had six. Yeah, yeah. They should have had the Raptors one if they don't get all these guys hurt, in my opinion. And if Draymond doesn't do the thing to, to LeBron, and, and, and Curry was worn out. Mm-hmm. So Draymond got kicked out for a game. Uh, Curry's ankle was so messed up. And uh, they still lost in, in a game seven. Mm-hmm. So I, I think they were the, by far the best team six of eight years. Uh, because of how they play, in my opinion. I love the contest you brought up because the Philadelphia 76ers played last night as well against the Milwaukee Bucks. And so this Tiki Taka or Cuisinart style, I want to kind of look at it broadly. Why don't more teams play that way and kind of venture towards the middle pick and roll? And I, my thought process around that is, well, look, and I get it. It's the NBA. James Harden, uh, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, LeBron James. These are the best tough shot makers in the world. And, you know, a middle pick and roll with any of them, 
and what's up, they will make that shot a lot because they're really good. But it seems like that is so much more pred- – it's that's such an easier thing to defend. Now, I'm not by any means saying it's easy to guard any of those guys. But if I know as a defense that's what I'm getting every time, I'm going to probably win a lot of those battles because you're not going to make every shot that you if, you if you go that way versus if everyone's weaponized and activated, I got problems. I think – well, first of all, I agree with you. I think it requires really good teaching, and I don't think the NBA has a lot of that. They have some. I don't think they have a lot. Uh, it requires players willing to move without the ball. Mm. There's, a, there's a humility to that. Uh, LeBron doesn't run on that first play we showed mm-hmm. because he wants to bring the ball up the court. Mm-hmm. He wanted the outlet pass. Mm-hmm. Curry, and we'll show some more clips of the Warriors in a minute, mm-hmm. gets rid of the ball quickly. When he does bring the ball up, he, he, that ball is in movement. He knows he may not get it back. He doesn't care. The goal is for us to score, not me to score. Uh, there is a... There's a Learning curve to this. The Warriors do get turnovers. They are turnover prone mm-hmm. compared to some more ball control teams like Dallas with Luka and Br- Brunson last year where they dribble it a ton. But clearly, it, 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 the rewards outweigh the risks for them. Yeah. And probably because of personnel, has how they shoot. But we're going to show you two more clips where they just get layups uh, without dribbling yep. because of the offense that they're running. And this isn't the tiki-taka of lots of passes, but it's set up. Everyone's, everyone's a willing passer of the ball. That's one reason why they're hugging those guys, by the way, yep. is they might be catching the ball any second now, too, and they're mm-hmm. shooters. The ball's just always moving. You're always in peril on defense, always in peril. So, so I, I hope it shows up on video. Here's a dead ball situation. I don't think, I don't think the Lakers had scored because the referee has the ball. My guess is it was a dead ball. Poole is saying, give me the ball, give me the ball, give me the ball. And he's telling Curry, get it, get go, get going, get going, mm-hmm. right? It's a mindset. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I want them on their heels. Mm-hmm. I don't want them settled yeah. yeah, physically or mentally. And so Poole gets it here. As soon as he gets the inbounds pass, he's flying up the court. Mm-hmm. Boom, look at him. He's, you can see those strides. So remember now, Curry face cut Reeves the last time. So he is not going to get face cut again. <laughs> and Curry sets him up and go and Poole delivers up. Again, the lane's wide open. Uh-huh. Uh, 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 Green's up high. Green, yep. you know, Draymond, I think, was pick, picking up. I mean, uh, AD might have been on whoever the other guy is over there. And um, Curry sets him up for a reverse layup and one. Uh, Clay Thompson doesn't even make it across half court before they score. Because he inbounds yeah. the pool. Poole yeah. is so fast jetting up the floor. That they're like, oh, what's happening? And to your point, Reeves, I'm not gonna get face cut this time. Okay, you're gonna yep. get back cut instead. <laughs> yeah. You weren't you weren't worried about that. And, and so Westbrook, Westbrook's in a bad position. Westbrook should have been much closer to the ball. Uh Poole was going full speed towards Curry. And but this is the deal. You're playing, you're you're playing a team that's playing so fast, you you just aren't I call it starting position. Mm-hmm. It's the most important thing actually in sports. Uh uh, all three sports. So in baseball, they have the shift now. They're getting rid of it. Uh, in football, you have alignments. And in basketball, you have your starting position. But it's all the same thing. The only difference is in football, uh, the, the ball is not even snapped. Baseball, and, and ba- baseball, the ball is not pitched. In basketball, it's moving. Mm-hmm. So you have to race and get in position, depending on where, in relation to where your man is, where the ball is, and where their biggest threats are. You have to factor all three things in. Where's my guy? Where's the ball? And where's their biggest threat? That doesn't mean he's going to shoot it, but I should be aware of where that biggest threat is. Mm-hmm. So to me, starting position is everything. Yeah. In high school, you spend a lot of time teaching it because they're terrible at it. In the pros, they should be better. In this, in this case, if I was in charge of the Lakers, I would say to Russell, what are you doing? <laughs> you need to have a foot in the paint. You know they're capable of going back door early. There's no one else in the paint. You know AD. You see AD to your left above you waiting for Clay. Mm-hmm. How are you not in position to take that back door? Yeah. And then Reeves, you know, Reeves is in the toughest spot because if you play underneath him, he might face cut you. Yep. If you play too far underneath, if you play more square, you might give, give up a three on the pin down action or dribble handoff. Mm-hmm. And so he overplays it and gets beat for the back door. It's still a hell of a finish by Curry, but he's in the NBA. You're supposed to make a lot of these. So you're, it, what you're saying, though, Coach, is that for, in Reeves' case, he had to pick his poison, right? Like, yeah. he can't, because you can't take everything away. Nope. No, you got to, yeah, but to me, the teaching point would be uh, what, uh, what Ime did those first four games against the Celtics. 
we're, we're going to take away the easy shot. Milwaukee's done this until this year. Milwaukee's always given up the most threes. I think this year it's the opposite. Yep. They're changing up their playing a little bit. They only played two games, one game. But last night they seemed to be more aware of, of giving, not giving up a three to Philly. Uh, but, but yeah, you got you to make a choice. But you, you'll never win giving up layups all game long. Mm-hmm. You're better off giving up threes and layups and just hope <laughs> the team misses. They're not going to miss layups a lot. They're going to miss plenty of threes some games. They're not going to miss layups all game long. That was, uh, what's that, uh, seven points? No, no it's five, five points. points. So, five, so right now they have five points on two possessions, zero dribbles by the score, mm-hmm. right? Check, check a Philly game out and see how often that happens. <laughs> never. Or, never. Teams. <laughs> yeah, not never, but not often. All right, here's, so here's the third play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah so, so similar idea. Check out, for those that are watching, check out how open the paint is. Five around zero, we call it. Five players around the three-point line. Normally call like four around one, one guy in the paint, three around two is how they played the, in the 90s, mm-hmm. right? Uh, the triangle was three around two typically for, yeah. for Phil Jackson. So this is, this is five around zero. No one's inside. A swing to Draymond. What you want to look for here is, is the patience of Jordan Poole. Mm-hmm. All right? So play it till Jordan. Jordan comes and gets – he's getting a screen by Wiggins, kind of an exchange. Curry cuts through, mm-hmm. and that occupies guys. Now Poole has the ball. Here comes Draymond. If you if you pause it here in a second, let it play out a little bit. When he reverse pivots, look how wide open right there that lane is. Yep. Poole could go to the basket mm-hmm. and score and get a shot off, I should say. He's got he's got I think it's had none on him. He's got him beat, probably. Mm-hmm. But look who's lurking. A D, mm-hmm. who's even with Poole and and a foot taller. Mm-hmm. So if Poole attacks, probably A D pins it against the glass. And AD is in a position where not only can he block it on the right side, he can affect the reverse. Yep. So here's where patience comes in. He, he instead of refusing the Draymond Green, he uses the screen, gets AD on him, mm-hmm. and now after Draymond, I don't know what Nunn is doing. <laughs> yeah. Nunn should have stayed back. Mm-hmm. Draymond's not a threat to shoot. Right. But it's the Cuisinart. It's the yeah. Warriors. You're always thinking, oh, my God, 3-3-3-3-3. Three, 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 three. Nunn goes up. Oh, that's Walker. Walker. That's Walker. Yeah. yeah. And Draymond gets as open a layup as you'll ever see in the half court in the NBA. Yeah. LeBron probably is, is hugging. I think it's maybe Curry too tight, but it's Curry. Yeah. So this is now seven points in three possessions with not a single dribble by the shooter. So it, it's that same thing you've talked about, about the Warriors putting pressure on you, right? So none yep. is pressed up against Curry because it's Steph Curry. Right. LeBron's hugging Clay Thompson because it's Clay Thompson. Andrew Wiggins shot 37% from three. So Westbrook's got to stay on him. So that that's – and again, Lonnie Walker is the fourth is the one who made the mistake there, right? It's like, I don't want to worry about Draymond shooting threes. But yeah. again, this we're playing it in half speed. He's got to make that decision in – one one hundredth of a second. I, I use the word. I use the term millisecond. I oh, you've heard me say it many times. Mm-hmm. Half a second's too slow. Yes. I, I I always talk to players in terms of milliseconds. Yeah. Yeah. The so, blink of yeah, an eye. He guessed wrong, and well, there you go. Yeah. yeah. And it, it, it was, just. Yeah. Poor execution by by Lonnie Walker. But this is what the Warriors do all the time. The mm-hmm. Celtics did a great job of this against them, and then uh, Curry just shot great, and they got out of it, and then they started giving other stuff. But the idea would be. You got to, but this is the problem with the Queens and Rock. They, they, they make you think they're just shooting threes with Steph, but they're carving you up for layups. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so here's the fourth play. So this is a little bit of a different action. Here we have a little pin down action, mm-hmm. not from the corner, but from the post area and where is- Wiggins, I think, pinned that, pins down, right? Yep. And this is your point, too, about you said that while our teams don't play this, a lot of stars wouldn't let Draymond bring the ball up. They want to be the one bringing the ball up, right? But Curry and Clay and these guys are like, we don't care. Like, it, it doesn't matter. Yeah, everyone's weaponized. Everyone has a role to play. Draymond buys into it, too, is not looking to shoot. So here, Wigman screens down for uh, uh, Curry. Mm-hmm. So, so pause it right there. You can go back and show it again. So here's a way that they're kind of using Curry almost as a decoy. Not that Draymond couldn't throw him the ball. He can. Mm-hmm. But – there's a different thing going on here. So, so Wiggins is pinning down Curry. Mm-hmm. Curry's racing towards Freezer right there. He's racing towards Davis, mm-hmm. but he veers, he, he ghosts him. Mm-hmm. He's not screening. So uh, uh, the way that the terminology now is, it's really all slipping the screen. He's not really s- screening. He's, uh, if he was veer screening, he'd be f- ghosting Davis and screening away. Mm-hmm. But there's no one away. Why? Right. Because Clay is coming to use Wiggins next. Right. On the bottom, on the far left of your screen, Clay is using that screen. So Curry is ghosting 
uh, Davis taking, I think, Walker out of the play. Yep. Here comes Clay off of that Wiggins pin down. Mm-hmm. And what happens? Freak out time. Yep. Westbrook and Nunn are worried about Clay's mid range shot. Mm-hmm. He's, made, he's made a bunch in this game or some of this game. And we have a rule in basketball we call the screener is always open. <laughs> so LeBron is pressed up, I think, on LeBron, on, on Looney more than he should be, worried that someone's going to use Looney as a screen. He's great at that, and they might get a corner three out of it. Mm-hmm. So everyone's kind of hugging their guy. Yeah. Look, at, uh, look at, at, at Curry's man on him tight. Mm-hmm. And who's left wide open underneath? Andrew Six Wiggins. foot eight, super athlete, number one pick in the draft, Andrew Wiggins, Easy for bucket. a wide open dunk. So, yeah, so now we've got nine points on four possessions with not a single dribble by the shooter. That's the Cuisinart. It, it, you know, watching these plays, again, over and over in slow-mo, you realize, to your point, again, you say millisecond. Yeah. So not only do the players, because, you know, they're NBA players, so they got their assignment, they know what they're supposed to do, but they're also human beings, right, Coach? So to your point, they see – they know the names on the back of the jerseys just like the fans do, right? Shit, that's Steph Curry. Shit, that's Klay Thompson. So everyone, you're high alert, high alert, high alert. But instead of communicating with each other, I'm on him. Drop back to no time. They both instinctually run towards Clay. There's Andrew just sitting by himself, easy, wide open dunk. And that's, you know, that's about discipline defensively, right? Your ability to know your assignment and not freak out and trust that. No, no, he's going to go and cover Clay like he's supposed to. I've got to stay home with Wiggins. And there's a, another step to that, which is there has to first be a foundation built. What are we guarding at all costs? The Bucks for four years have said the paint. Mm-hmm. So they will be caught less frequently on this kind of stuff. This is also game one for them, mm-hmm. for the Lakers. So let's be fair, yeah. right? Um, you, you have to, okay, we are not giving up the paint. Or we think we've got Rudy Gobert back there. Mm-hmm. So they can attack the room all they want. We are not giving up threes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You, you got to decide. What are you going to do? You're not going to let, you're going to deny certain passes. You're not going to let post entries or whatever. We're going to front the post. You've got to make decisions and then execute towards that strategy. Mm-hmm. And, but no strategy can work if you're giving up layups in the NBA. Yeah. That to me is why you got to start with that. Yeah. Uh, one of the great things about um, what Coach Thorpe does is some a lot of you know he coaches current players in the league in the off season, right? With working on various things, and throughout the season, as you would imagine, many of them he, he's in constant communication with them all the time about things they want to improve on. Hey, Coach, what'd you see here? All right, here's what I think. X, Y, Z is the case. So we thought it'd be cool. This isn't a player that that coach is working with, but if it was someone he was working with, this is what he would say. So this is the rookie, Benedict Matherin, who we are all very high here on, yep. on at True Hoop. Shouts to uh, Charlie Torres, his workout guy who's been on the pod before, right before the draft. Um, you saw something in the Pacers-Wizards game that you said, if I was coaching Benedict Matherin, this is what I would send him and say to him uh, in a video. So let's watch this play. Yeah, so uh, pause it just as it gets started, and I'll give you a quick background. So basically... I use WhatsApp to talk to players, and uh, I, I like to use my voice sometimes because players have often told me they hear my voice in games, which is great. I, it, I want them to hear my voice in games. I've even had players 10 years later tell me they still hear my voice when they're playing overseas. Um, that's, uh, so I will leave them voice messages frequently mm-hmm. instead of typing it out. I also fucking hate typing on my, my, my Android phone because it's not a BlackBerry anymore. I used to love my Blackberries, as you know. So, so I'll, I'll, I'll send them a clip of a play, mm-hmm. and then I'll leave a voice message, or sometimes I'll write it and explain to them what you messed up on that has to be cleaned up. So this is something we're going to do every time we do this. We're going to just imagine I'm coaching this player. I'm going to focus on the young guys. Mm-hmm. What would I be saying to them? And so the key for young players, Gerard, is you got to keep it simple for them. There's a lot going on in their brains. Yeah. And they're also trying to learn the offense and defense of this new team. So here's a play where I'll, I'll break it down. Uh, Will Barton had used the Daniel Gafford screen, mm-hmm. and Matherin is switched on to Gafford. Mm-hmm. Okay? So as Barton's driving, uh, Matherin has, should have only two thoughts in his head. And I would say to him, thought number one is, okay, I'm now guarding their big. Mm-hmm. The millisecond I, I sense – even before he, Barton shoots it, when I sense he's going to shoot it, I've got to be thinking, uh, uh, this guy's going to go after the offensive rebound. 
because you're a little guard at six foot six, mm-hmm. powerfully built guy, but that dude's a center. Mm-hmm. And if it was another guard, maybe he wouldn't go after the, the offensive rebound. Or if you were a big guy going up against a big guy, maybe he wouldn't always crash the glass. But pretty much all the time, when you are a guard going up against a big and a shot's taken, he is going to murder you on the glass. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's the first thought that should have happened before the shot ever got taken, is I know he's coming to get an offensive rebound against me. Then, once the shot is taken, you should only have one thought. One thought. And that is, I'm not letting this guy get it. Because I know he's coming. I've already made that decision. He's coming. I'm a guard. He's a big. I don't care if you face block him like you're an offensive lineman. I don't care if you shoulder him hard, hit him with your hips and shoulders, or turn and box him out. But what you can't do, the only thing you simply cannot do is what you just did, Benedict, which was nothing. <laughs> that 6'11", that Daniel Gafford's 6'11", 7-foot athletic dude, he is coming to the glass. Now, in this case, they got lucky. He didn't score it. Mm-hmm. But the process was a failure. You got an F for that. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Matherin. I think he's going to be really good. Yeah, very good. But you have, if you're going to switch and you're switching on a big, you can never not block out the center when a shot's taken. Um, oftentimes, I mean, you've seen this, of course, coaching players and when you're watching games, everyone's heard of the phrase paralysis by analysis, right? And it seemed as though in that moment, Benedict's feet were in cement blocks. He was just like, uh, okay. <laughs> was, uh, do you think he was thinking there? What, what am I supposed no. to be doing? Like, no. uh, what, what's happening? Or just froze? What, what was happening in that I, moment? I, okay. A term I've been, I've been using a lot recently and never really before is mindfulness. And I, I'm really glad that I've kind of stumbled upon it because it's such a big part of the game. You have to be mindful of things. Veterans are mindful. So uh, the bandwidth of, of ourselves at our age is so much better than my 81-year-old mom. Mm-hmm. Uh, she just doesn't have the bandwidth. She used to have a husband of four kids and two dogs and a bird and fish. And she can handle all of it. But at 81, she can barely take care of herself right. because she, her bandwidth is so small. That's what it's like for rookies. <laughs> They're like 81-year-old people. <laughs> they, they just, I mean, Matherin with the ball is magical. He's really a talented scorer. He's got to think about all the defensive principles. He's got to think about the different offensive calls and what their responsibilities are. And, it, and all of that is crammed into that big pipe brain of his that's sending messages down to his body. But when the shot's taken, it, it just nothing happened. There was no thought of, oh, God, I got to block out. Right. Now, I'm telling you, he's a, apparently a terrific young man. All you have to do is say, Ben, like, whatever you do, you've got to make sure you hit him when you're matched with a five. He may not do it every time. He'll do it the next time. Mm-hmm. He'll probably do the next three or four times, yep. maybe four or five, five or six, six or seven maybe nine of 10, eventually you never miss it. You never miss that. That's just a learning point, a teaching point, And you just got to keep accumulating them over the course of seasons. Mm -hmm. And that's how you grow as a player. Well, you know, we talk about the best in the game, your Curry's, your LeBron's, your Chris Paul's, those guys with their computer brains, because they have a billion reference points. That's right. right. So they they know what is supposed to happen. But these, Matherin, as I I joke, those guys have like encyclopedic file cabinets. He's got a file folder. Okay, right. like right. not a whole it, lot, not a whole lot in there. <laughs> that might have been first half game one. Yes, <laughs> or maybe second half game one. Like he's right. just starting. Yeah, right. not that he has learned to block out before, but in in even first of all, a lot of guys don't block out because they're just so athletic they'll get the ball. But when you're matched up with a five, six six always loses seven feet. Yeah, it just does. I mean, if if it's a, if it's a if it's a brick and the ball hits short, then you get it. Mm-hmm. But anything up in the air. Those guys are seven feet tall, and they're going to hit you too. You just can't win those. You've yeah. got to hit them. Yeah. You've just got. You'll see face. You'll see guys uh, blocking like they're an offensive tackle all the time when they're in that the kind of matchup. Uh, like for example, anytime Stephen Adams plays, <laughs> yeah. Stephen Adams is the LT. Yeah, he, he's the Lawrence Taylor of the NBA. Yeah, you've got to just keep him off the glass any way you can, and let's rally up defensively, rebounding wise, with the other guys. And so hard because he's so big and strong. So strong, yeah. <laughs> uh, coach, this was incredible. Guys, I, I, you have to love this, right? Like, when you listen to Thorpe, and that's just like, you know, we say he's got a big basketball brain. That was like, I don't know, like one one millionth of a tiny little piece <laughs> of, what, of what's in that brain of his. We're going to try to do as much of these as we can to give you guys insight into what he's seeing on the floor, what I see when I see things. And I think it'll give you all, when you're watching basketball, a different perspective on watching the game. And I think the contrasts, 
what we saw between the Lakers and the Warriors. And really, let's be honest, the Warriors and just about every other team in the league, right? It's just they're weaponized. Everybody's moving. I say it all the time. Yes, it's hard to stop these great players one-on-one. But if I know as a defender that's all they're running, I'm going to win a lot of those matchups because I'm not worried about anybody else. But when five dudes are running around, cutting, and mo- I- I'm my-, my head's hurting right now thinking about it because I'm like, shit, who am I supposed to cover, right? And so, as you said, in a millisecond, if you're thinking shit, who am I supposed to cover, it doesn't matter. Whoever you're supposed to cover already open and scored, you know, you- you're know, losing that battle. So it's a really cool thing to watch. And I hope that you guys uh, continue to hang out with us and learn from Coach Thorpe's big basketball brain. <laughs> Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us, and we will see you next time on True Hoop Tactics.